Life is full of ups and downs. And let's be honest, we've all had our share of missteps. Whether it's buying that flashy gadget we didn't really need, or splurging on a spontaneous vacation, we've all made financial choices that in hindsight weren't the wisest. Today, we're here to help you navigate the complex world of personal finance and steer clear of some all too common mistakes that could drain your wallet. So, if you're ready to take charge of your financial future, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll explore seven personal finance mistakes that could mess up your financial stability. You won't want to miss these insights, so be sure to stick around until the end. To stay updated with more valuable content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. Your support keeps us motivated and helps you stay informed about managing your money wisely. Let's jump into it. Mistake 1. Assuming what worked for your parents will work for you. Our parents can be a valuable source of guidance in various aspects of life. They've gathered a lot of experience over the years, and that can be really helpful. However, it's important to remember that, just like us, they have their limits. There are certain things they might not be well informed about, and that's where their advice might not be as useful. Let's take modern dating as an example. Your parents may not be up to date with the latest dating apps or know how to navigate them effectively to increase your chances of finding a date. They might not even know the names of the popular dating platforms that are commonly used today. In this particular case, seeking their advice on how to create an appealing online dating profile might not be the best idea because it's outside their realm of knowledge. So, while they're a valuable source of wisdom in many areas, it's essential to recognize when their expertise might not apply. Here's another example, and it's about your career. You know, our parents always emphasized studying hard and landing a good job after college. Now, I'm not knocking formal education, but the rewards it used to offer are not quite the same these days. When our parents graduated, entry-level salaries were probably similar to what they are now, but the costs of things were way different. Back then, you could get a brand new car for $10,000 and a house for $100,000. Today, things have changed. The average new car costs over $40,000 and homes in big cities can easily start at $500,000 or more. So, the idea of buying a car for a fraction of your annual salary or a home in just a couple of years of income and then steadily getting raises at work made sense back then. But with the rising costs of pretty much everything, that approach doesn't work the same way anymore. If you're only collecting small raises while home prices are soaring, you'll find yourself falling behind financially. The lesson here is that to tackle today's problems, you often need modern solutions. When it comes to managing your finances, relying solely on your salary might not cut it. Chances are, you'll need a side hustle or a small business to make significant financial progress. Yes, it might mean less leisure time, but it's better to be prepared for financial challenges than to be caught off guard and struggling when they hit. So, even though your parents can still be a valuable source of support, you've got to think about what advice or help you take from them. What worked for them might not work the same way for you in today's world. Mistake 2. Not having any financial goals. You can ask just about anyone, and they'll tell you they want to improve their financial situation. Whether it's reducing credit card debt, paying off the mortgage, or earning more for their time, we all want more financial success than we have now. What's kind of crazy is that, while we all want this, most people can't figure out how to get from where they are to where they want to be. So why is that? It's because many folks don't have financial goals. Now, when it comes to financial goals, there are three types of people. First, there are those without any financial goals. These are the folks who just go with the flow, letting life dictate where they'll end up financially. It might seem like a relaxed way to live, but it's also the riskiest approach. Then there are the loose planners. These are the folks who say they want to be rich or start their own business, but their goals are pretty vague. They don't really have a clear plan on how they're going to achieve these objectives. You don't want to fall into this category. Finally, You've got the group with clear financial goals and a well-defined roadmap to reach them. This is the group you want to be in, and it's for a darn good reason. If you're not winning the lottery or born into wealth, 
Your financial success won't be because of luck. It'll be the result of hard work and planning. Let's take an example to drive this home. Say you're 20 years old and you have this goal of retiring at 55. Now, you've got two choices. You can either keep telling people about your dream of retiring early and hope it magically happens, or you can sit down, figure out how much money you need to retire comfortably in your 50s, calculate how much you should invest each month to hit that target, and then actually do it month after month. Which of these two individuals do you think has a better shot at retiring early? You guessed it, it's the second person. The truth is, getting rich or achieving your financial goals is pretty straightforward. You set clear, detailed goals and then break them down into specific tasks that you need to complete. Is it easy? Not really. Will you encounter obstacles along the way? Absolutely. But with a well-thought-out plan, you're at least moving in the right direction. It's much better than wandering around aimlessly, leaving your financial dreams up to luck instead of proper planning. Mistake 3. Paying off your mortgage before investing. You know, sometimes in life, the order of things matters. Think about how you need to put on your pants before your shoes, or how adding and multiplying are different in math. The same idea applies to money, especially when we talk about your mortgage and investing. Now, I get it. Some of you might not even be thinking about investing yet because buying a house feels out of reach. That's understandable, given how expensive homes have become. But at some point, you'll likely want to be a homeowner. So, it's essential to understand the order of paying your mortgage and investing. To put it simply, waiting until you've completely paid off your mortgage before starting to invest doesn't usually make much sense. This is because of how something called compound interest works. And it depends on two things, time and money. The more time you give your investments to grow, the better. If you delay investing to pay down your mortgage, which usually has lower interest rates, you're missing out on the chance to make more money in the future. Let me break it down for you. If you start investing $300 a month from ages 18 to 27 and get a 10% return, you could have nearly $2 million when you retire at 65, and you've only put in $28,800 of your own money. But if you start at 28, you'd need to invest $400 a month until you're 65 or put in $175,000 of your own money to get the same results. In simple terms, when it comes to investing, the sooner you start, the more money you can make, all else being equal. But of course, you can't just ignore your mortgage payments. That's not an option. So, the best way to balance your mortgage and investing is this. Always make sure you pay your monthly mortgage bills. It's crucial because if you don't, you could lose your home. And we definitely don't want that to happen. Then, with any extra money you have, use it for investing. Keep doing this until your investment returns are more than what you're paying in mortgage interest. Only when your investments are doing better than your mortgage interest should you think about paying down your mortgage faster. Otherwise, focus on your investments and you'll be better off financially in the long run. Mistake four. Thinking you must buy and not rent a home. Have your parents ever hit you with the classic question, well, if Jimmy jumped off a bridge, would you jump too? It's all about our deep-seated desire to fit in. One way we try to fit into the societal mold is by following the typical life path, going to college, getting a job, buying a house, getting married, and starting a family. Now, let's be clear. None of these life events are absolutely mandatory but society sure makes us feel like we should tick all these boxes on our becoming an adult checklist. But I'm not here to tell you who to date or which college to attend. Instead, let's chat about the nitty gritty of home ownership in today's financial climate. If you're anything like me, you've been sold the dream of owning your own home. I can tell you, as a homeowner myself, there's a real sense of pride that comes with it. But here's the kicker. That pride is getting more expensive by the day. That's why we're seeing more and more folks opting to rent. And in my opinion, that's perfectly fine. Is it okay that some people who'd love to own a home can't because of sky-high prices? Absolutely not. However, the rise in renting might just shift how our society views renting 
as a long-term housing option. Now, for those who were brought up believing homeownership was the only way to go, renting might seem like throwing money down the drain. That's a common misconception, and it's worth busting. The truth is, while you might not be building equity when you rent, there are loads of advantages. You don't have to spend years saving up for a hefty down payment. You can invest that money instead. Plus, you can dodge property taxes, selling costs, and, the best part, you can easily move when you rent. If something breaks, no sweat, your landlord deals with it. So, while buying a home is the right move for many, renting makes sense too. Mistake 5. Relying only on a paycheck for money. Many people make a common money mistake by relying solely on their job's paycheck. Jobs, like the typical 9-5, aren't designed to make you super wealthy. To understand this, just look at the world's richest people. None of them got there by depending solely on a paycheck. Another reason not to rely on your paycheck to get rich is that there's a limit to how much you can earn. Every company has a fixed salary structure, and sometimes you have to work for many years to earn more. Plus, sometimes when your hourly wages go up, it doesn't mean your take-home pay increases. For instance, in 2021, hourly wages rose by 4.7%, but when you factor in inflation, the overall wages fell by about 2.4% on average for all workers. However, not everyone can or wants to be an entrepreneur or own a business. So, what can you do to get rich with a regular 9-5 job? Try to find another job that pays better if possible. Save a part of your income every month to start a side business or project. Learn about investing and how to make your money grow. Mistake 6. Spending time with other broke people. You become like the people you hang out with the most. If you're often around lazy or financially struggling folks, you're likely to pick up their habits. So, if you want to avoid being lazy or financially struggling yourself, make sure you're not only surrounded by such people. This happens because we learn from our interactions with others. If you're friends with folks who struggle financially, you might start doing the same. You could end up buying things on credit, slacking at work, making excuses, and, in the end, facing financial difficulties. On the flip side, if you spend time with people who are financially well-off, you're likely to pick up their good money habits. You'll learn how to manage your finances and control your spending. So, take a look at your five closest friends. If they aren't setting a good example for you, it might be time to make some new, more positive friends. Mistake 7. Ignoring your investing costs. If you're someone who's actively putting your money into investments, that's a commendable step toward securing a better financial future. Think of it like planting seeds for wealth that will grow over time. Long-term investing is a reliable path to accumulating financial security in the future. However, there's a vital factor you need to pay attention to, and that's the costs associated with your investments. In a survey conducted in 2021, they found that around 30% of Americans hire paid financial advisors to help them manage their money. Having a financial expert guide, you can be extremely helpful. However, here's the catch. It comes at a cost, and you should be aware of it. On average, these advisors charge about 1% of the total amount you invest. While 1% may not seem like a lot, it can add up significantly over time. To put it in perspective, if you invest $1,000 every month for 40 years, under the guidance of a financial advisor, you'd end up paying them nearly $600,000 in fees. That's a substantial amount of money. Now, unless you have an extra $600,000 to spare, and most people don't, there's a smarter and more cost-effective way to invest. These days, you have the option to choose low-cost index funds. These funds have much lower fees which means you get to keep more of your money working for you. And here's the kicker. They often deliver investment returns that are just as good, if not better, than what you might achieve with a higher-cost financial advisor. To sum it up, understanding and managing the costs of investing is crucial. Opting for cost-effective investment options, like low-cost index funds, can help ensure that your money grows to its full potential without a significant portion being eaten up by fees. 
It's about making informed choices to set yourself up for financial success in the long run. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload and you can enjoy the excellent content I send your way.